kama umebaki nje shauri yako ati bibi yai ni bus ambaye haina brake gari hii itaenda na haina brake wewe unaweza ingia bus na bibi yako na watoto ambaye haina brake shetani ashindwe na tena driver hiyo bus haina brake ni mtu ya rege ati bibi yai itatumika ati kuzuia matoleo kanisani kama kazi itakaliwa huko juu eh, deputy president hata wewe chukua moja sisi wanasiasa tusiende kujiwekea viti yenye tunachitakia bibi yai msitumie kugawanya wananchi All right, gentlemen, welcome to our show tonight. And uh, I, I want to discuss something that just cropped up this evening. Uh, before I discuss that, you were just telling us off camera that uh, um, when I read my take tonight that you made a, pr a proposal yes. to the health committee. What is this about? Well, I did, uh, and I'm happy that you mentioned uh, about NHIF. It's of serious concern, which I saw way when we just uh, opened parliament or I just joined parliament. And I gave a legislative proposal to the health committee, which they are still considering. And my proposal was that uh, NHIF cannot survive in the current structure. It cannot uh, survive in the current form of doing business. My proposal was NHIF should be run the way AAR is. They should have their own clinics. They should have their own chemists. They should employ their own doctors so that they are competing with other, uh, even CT scan machine, X-ray machines, everything that is provided medically, a, um, NHIF should be able to provide that service from their clinics. And they can do it because they have uh, the infrastructure already, so that they are able to compete with the other hospitals and bring the costs of medical services down. Okay. Right now, outsourcing it, there's a lot of corruption. That's, a, that's one of the reasons yes. why this is not working. That is one of the so big reasons. So where is this proposal right now? It is, it is still at, with the health committee. I, was, I even uh, asked the, the, one of the members the other day, and they told me they would be calling me again soon so that we can fast track it, okay. especially after this, um, this uh, stories came up. But I think it would be sad if NHIF collapsed. Okay. It has really transformed the medical um, facilities. It has really helped a lot of people. Um, this morning I was in my constituency, a young boy, a Form 1 student, was knocked down by a um, motorbike and he died. And because he had NHIF, the parents who are very hum from a humble background uh, did not have a much uh, a heavy bill to, to carry because okay. NHIF was working. Okay. So I think it's, it would be sad if NHIF collapsed. It would be very sad for this country. Okay. And, and we, know we shouldn't let it. Let it collapse. And mm. obviously, Moshimiwa, you deal with <coughs> cases of people calling you every day in the constituency yes. to contribute to uh, their medical bills or even funeral, which the bills that still remain in hospital after yes. they are buried. And all that. This is something that obviously concerns you as a legislator. Yes, certainly, and uh, I want to thank my brother that he was thinking around those um, matters, but it, it may not help much. My view is that all social security, you know, funds we have in the country about the problem of corruption, whether you look at NHIF, whether you go to NSSF, and I think we must firmly deal with, uh, you know, corrupt officials running those, uh, you know, public social security funds. The major thing that I think would, uh, you know, uh, salvage uh, NHIF, because you know, can uh, medical services is a constitutional right currently, and NHIF is of course a very critical enabler. In my view, we would uh, save NHIF if we required that all civil servants, all public servants, and when I say public servants, I'm including state officers. Mm -hmm. Uh, be insured or covered in terms of health provision by NHIF. I do not understand, Ken, how we can have a national uh, hospital insurance fund and you go to parliament, uh, members of parliament are being insured by some private firm uh, and hospitals are racking a lot of money on very minor treatments. Uh, you have uh, teachers now being required to, to be insured elsewhere very huge funds which would go into NHIF to strengthen it are of course being uh, you know directed to those other private entities you have the police and generally the, the, the larger bulk of public servants I believe if we directed all the monies which go to medical provision and the public service to NHIF we will not worry about its stability and, and, and that way uh, imagine a situation where uh, Ken I was under NHIF 
And then uh, as members of parliament, the state officers and all public officers were also required to, to be treated in public health facilities, which is another second thing I believe would work. Uh, I would be asking the state of uh, Kenyatta, I would be asking the state of the hospital in Omabe, because you know, when you are sick, it is not only that border border person Cookers. or that poor mama, but you will be making your bed to lie on in the hospitals, you will ensure there are facilities across. I think those are the pharma, you know, policy interventions uh, before we even go legislative okay. to secure the survival of NHIF and, and our health sector. Okay. Yeah. And generally, I think we agree that the rogue officers need to be reined in. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, 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 all right. Oh, yes. uh, gentlemen, uh, I, I want to discuss substantially the BBI, but there's something that happened this evening that I think I should bring to your attention. We just learned that uh, the deputy president was supposed to go to Embu. And uh, right after I made that announcement, because it's supposed to be there over the weekend, there was an attempt to block him. And I say it's an attempt because where he was supposed to hold the meeting, um, is said to be closed and under renovation. But th th it's not even because of the closure and taking it under renovation, but the timing that is suspect. And this is not the first time um, uh, we hear or we report that uh, the deputy president is going somewhere and there are such uh, underhand deals to, for me to block him from going. This is a national leader, this is a deputy president. Does it concern you, Caleb? Well, it uh, not only concerns me, <coughs> but it concerns a lot of uh, Kenyans, excuse me. Um, I also heard that story, but I'm told that uh, the governor has reconsidered his decision. I don't know how true that is, and the venue will be available. And the function is not a political function, it is a church function. Um, what is happening to Kenyans that they have become so desperate that they want even to block the deputy president from attending church functions, I do not know. But um, if uh, Wambora has resigned his decision and uh, the venue is available, the deputy president will be in Embu for the church function on Saturday. Okay, which is a, a good move. I don't know if you want to comment over this. Yeah, can you say that uh, the stadium is being uh, renovated? That's the, the, they said they are closing it down for renovation. Yes, well, um, I'm not in the county government of Embu to know the reason as to why they would um, you know, stop any functions from being held there. Of course, if the stadium is under renovations, uh, it would be understandable. Uh, I, I, I don't know um, uh, the, the arrangement around uh, the deputy president, and because of that, I, I don't want to comment more than that. Okay. But I, I would only believe that um, there is a good reason if indeed um, uh, the deputy president <coughs> is being uh, you know, told to, to do things elsewhere. Uh, if it is a church function, uh, um, uh, why is it not in a church? Uh, I don't understand. So essentially, I'm saying I'm not alive to the circumstances <laughs> around the issue, and I think it would not be right for me to comment. Okay. Mm. Yeah, but, but th th what if it was true that right after he announced, he made the announcement that I'm going to Embo over the weekend, then the same day an announcement comes in a, an hour or two later, as he says he's going to We had those challenges, you remember, in our previous time of parliament. Uh, we would be told... Uh, uh, Uru Park has been booked by such organization, and, and, and uh, we always ended up in court. This is coming quite early. If the team of the deputy president uh, believes not in the reasons being given, they can go to court. <laughs> Remember, many of the occasions we went to the court apart from the money, and we got access when the county had um, denied us access of the state machinery through the county. So there is enough time to address some of these issues. <laughs> I don't think that it would be right for us as leaders to begin, you know, casting as passions or doubts around the reasons being given uh, by either side for proceeding in the manner they want to proceed. I believe reasonableness will proceed. You just don't want to go straight to the point, but you know, if it was to happen that way, then it's totally uncalled for. Uh, if the I mean, purpose was to block him. I, I've told you that the deputy president is the principal assistant of the president. So I imagine he's assisting the president in that church function he's going for. <laughs> My issue would be, is the st study a under renovation or not? And, 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 and why is it not in charge? But I don't want to be a party to you know, <laughs> <laughs> the state machinery and matters of the county to which I'm not privy. Okay. Mm. 